a bad month. Dear Marianne, I don't think letters are supposed to have titles, but if they did, I'd call this one a bad month. Lots of bad things have happened since I moved to Fort Falls. I will tell you about them all. Bad thing number one. My room is very, very, very small. Max got the big room and I got the very, very, very small room. Bad thing number two. My bathroom is not actually my bathroom. It is the bathroom I have to share with Max. You'll have to share with him too when you come visit, but don't worry, we can lock him out. Maybe we'll lock him out all day, and if he has to go really bad, he'll have to go in the backyard. Ha, ha, ha. Bad thing number three. My next door neighbor is a very mean girl. Very, very, very mean. The only person who likes her is Max, so you can imagine how mean she must be. She doesn't even talk to me except to tell me to leave her alone. You won't like her. Bad thing number four. There's a wish pond on my street, but I don't think it works. Wishes are supposed to come true when you throw rocks into the pond, but I've been throwing them in since I moved here and none of my wishes have come true. If they had, I would still be living next door to you. That's all I have to tell you about. Everything was bad when I moved in a month ago and it hasn't gotten any better since. I can't wait to see you. We're going to have so, so, so much fun. It will be just like it used to be. We'll paint our toenails. We'll take cheeseburger on long walks. We'll say everything three times. We'll even play our favorite game. You know which one that is. I miss you so, so, so much. I am counting the days until you get here. Max says he is too. Hugs, hugs, hugs. Kisses, kisses, kisses. Mallory. I reread my letter. Even though I don't love, love, love writing letters... I think this one is good. I told Marianne about all the bad things that have happened to me since I moved here. Then I think about what I didn't tell her. I didn't tell her that even though we made a pinky swear not to be friends with the boy next door, I am. I wrote in my letter that things will be just like they used to be, but I'm not sure how things with Marianne will be just like they used to be because I'm friends with Joey too. All this thinking has given me a headache. I know why I don't like writing letters. You have to think about what you write in them, and I'm sick of thinking about what I've written in this one. I put my letter to Marianne inside a purple envelope and lick it shut. I write S-W-A-K on the outside with a purple marker. My letter to Marianne is sealed with a kiss, and it is on the way. Mallory in the Middle Dear Mallory, I got your letter and I can't wait to see you. I'm not writing much. I'm going to see you so, so, so soon and we can talk, talk, talk then. We're going to have so much fun. No one to bug us, except Max, of course. Just you and me, just like old times. Hugs, 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 kisses, kisses, kisses. Marianne There are three good reasons not to hide inside a curtain. One, itchy. Two, stinky. Three, it's hard to read your mail. I don't exactly know why I'm trying to read Marianne's letter. I've read it so many times, I've practically memorized it. Especially the part about just you and me, just like old times. When I lived next door to Marianne, it was just the two of us. But now I live next door to Joey. If I add up Mallory plus Marianne plus Joey, I get three. And the bad thing about the number three is that someone is always in the middle. And I feel like that someone is going to be me. I bend down to scratch my foot, but someone gets to it first. Gotcha. Max pulls me out of my hiding spot. How come you're not out with kangaroo boy waiting for bird brain? Max laughs. Those two animals should get along great. I never talk to Max about my problems, but I could use some advice right now. That's the problem, I tell him. I haven't told Marianne I live next door to a boy who's my new friend, and I haven't told Joey my old best friend is coming to visit. I look at Max. I hope he'll tell me what to do, and he does. 
Better get back inside those curtains, Max laughs. You're toast. A car honks. Max is right. I am toast. Burned toast with no butter or jelly. Come on. Max pulls me outside. This visit might actually be fun. I shove Marianne's letter in my pocket and run outside. Somehow I have to keep Marianne and Joey apart. Mallory! She runs to hug me. I am so, so, so happy I'm here. I'm happy she's here too. I'm also happy Joey isn't outside in his front yard. Our moms hug. Marianne's mom takes my mom by the arm and they start walking into my house. You have to show me absolutely everything, she says. Marianne takes my arm. Me too, she says. I want to see everything. Mallory has a lot to show you, says Max. I roll my eyes at him. He could probably get in the Guinness Book of World Records for worst older brother. Wish pond first, says Marianne. Marianne is usually full of good ideas, but this one isn't one of them. If Joey sees us outside, he'll come too. I've got to keep Marianne inside. I pull her by the hand. House first. I give her a tour of my room. Then my house. Then the closets in my house. I want this tour to take as long as possible. Now for the kitchen drawers, I say. You need to know where we keep the spoons in case you need a midnight snack and I'm asleep. Marianne yawns. This is boring. Let's go outside. I've got to keep Marianne inside. I drag her back in my room. There's something we have to do. It's tow time. I sit down on the floor and start painting. Marianne sits down and paints her toes too. As soon as all ten of hers are purple and shiny, she screws the top back on the bottle of polish. She stands up and slips on her flip-flops. Come on, I want to see the wish pond. I put my toes carefully through the fronts of my flip-flops. Not so fast, I tell Marianne. You don't want to mess up your polish. I have a bad feeling about what she's going to find at the wish pond. Show me how it works, Marianne says when we get there. I want to make a wish. I pick up two rocks and hand one to Marianne. I want to make a wish too, but the moment I haven't been waiting for happens before I have a chance to wish it doesn't. Joey walks out of his house and over to the wish pond. Hey, Mallory. Joey talks to me, but he's looking at Marianne. Who's this? I've never seen her before. I throw in my rock and make a quick wish. I wish old friends and new friends can become instant friends. I introduce my friends to each other. Joey, Marianne, Marianne, Joey. I feel like they should shake. Mallory and I are best friends. Marianne smiles at Joey. I'm visiting her for the weekend. Really? Joey scratches his head like he's confused. Yes, really, says Marianne. And we're going to have a great, great, great time because we're best, best, best friends. We live next door to each other all our lives until she moved here, of course. Hmm. Joey says, hmm, like he's in math class trying to think of an answer he really doesn't know. That's weird. Marianne rolls her eyes. What's so weird about that? Joey picks up a rock and throws it across the pond. It's weird that Mallory never told me you were coming to visit. I live next door to her. We play together every day, and she's never told me about you. I'm surprised, that's all. I try to speak, but it's kind of hard when it feels like you've got a giant wad of gum stuck in your throat. Marianne looks confused. Who is this kid? I cross my freshly painted toes. I hope she understands. I whisper in Marianne's ear so Joey can't hear me. Even though we pinky swore we wouldn't be friends with the boy next door, I have to play with Joey because I don't have anybody else to play with. Marianne smiles. She looks like what I said makes sense to her. Then I look at Joey. Max always tells me boys don't care about secrets. 
but Joey looks like he cares about the one I just whispered to Marianne. I lean over and whisper in Joey's ear. Marianne rode in a car for three hours to come see me. While she's here, I have to play with her. But when she leaves, we'll play, okay? Joey picks up a rock and throws it across the pond. No, he says. Not okay. Why can't we all play? How do I tell Joey that's a bad idea? Some people say having two friends means double the fun, but I'm beginning to think it means double the trouble. What a great idea, says Marianne. Joey can play with us. Did I hear her right? Did Marianne say Joey can play with us? Cool, says Joey. Cool is right. I know why Marianne has been my best friend since I was born. So what are we going to play? Joey asks. Mallory and I are going to teach you how to play our favorite game. Mega cool, says Joey. Can't wait. But I groan. This is not mega cool at all. I know the game we're going to play. It's my favorite game and it's Marianne's favorite game. But I don't think Joey's going to like it at all. Taster's Choice Okay, says Marianne. Here's how you play. She goes into the pantry and gets down boxes and bottles and jars. She goes to the refrigerator and brings out bowls and pitchers and plates. When Marianne is finished, our kitchen table is covered with eggs, olives, peanut butter, pickles, sardines, gooseberry jelly, black licorice, biscuit dough, flour, butter, marshmallows, baking soda, lemon juice, leftover meatloaf, tuna fish, and onion eggplant casserole, shredded coconut, frozen peas, coffee creamer, and prune juice. Ick. When I look at some of the stuff on the table, I'm not sure why Marianne and I like this game. But we do. In second grade, we played until we tasted everything in the kitchen. We even tasted some things from the bathroom like hand lotion and hair conditioner. Mallory, since you know how to play, you're first. Marianne takes a bandana off her head and ties it around my eyes. Then she explains the rules to Joey. I'm going to spin Mallory around three times. Then she points to something on the table. Whatever she chooses, she has to taste. Then she has to guess what it is. Get it? Got it, says Joey. But what if we don't like what we taste? Too bad, says Marianne. That's how you play. Okay, says Joey. It can't be that bad, right? Right, Marianne giggles. Wrong, I think to myself. I don't like the sound of Marianne's giggle. She checks my blindfold and spins me. When I stop spinning, I point. I can't see, but I hear Marianne and Joey laughing. Not a good sign. Open up, says Marianne. She puts something cold and squishy in my mouth. Ugh, disgusting. Chew, Marianne says. You know the rule. I do know the rule. You have to eat the whole bite. I wish I could spit it out, though. I don't like cold, squishy foods. What is it? asks Marianne. It's not a marshmallow. It's not a sardine. Eggplant casserole, I guess. Right, Marianne and Joey laugh. I rip off the blindfolds and gulp down a glass of water. Whoever made the recipe for eggplant casserole made a big mistake. Marianne is next. She gets baking soda. My Aunt Sally used to put baking soda on my cousin Caroline when she had a diaper rash. Anything that cures diaper rash must taste even worse than eggplant. When it's Joey's turn, he gets frozen peas. Cold he says after he makes his guess. But not bad. We play until we taste almost everything on the table. I get some really gross stuff. Flour, biscuit dough, and butter. Knock, knock, I say when I get butter. Who's there? Marianne asks. Butter? Butter who? Butter hope you get something that tastes better than butter. Marianne laughs at my joke, but she doesn't get anything better She gets some of the worst foods on the table. Prune juice, an onion, and leftover meatloaf. 
Joey gets a marshmallow, peanut butter, and black licorice. It's time to stop this game before someone gets something really gross. Who wants to play outside? I ask. One more round, says Marianne. Okay by me, says Joey. I don't know if it's the butter, the biscuit dough, or the idea of another round, but my stomach hurts. The blindfold goes back on. I get gooseberry jelly. Marianne gets lemon juice. When it's Joey's turn, Marianne blindfolds him and spins him really fast. When he points, his finger misses the table and points to something in the pantry. The something he's pointing to is Cheeseburger's cat food. Marianne covers her mouth to keep from laughing and takes a pellet out of the bag. No, I mouthed Marianne, but she pops the pellet in Joey's mouth before I can stop her. I cover my eyes. This is exactly what I didn't want to happen. Joey chews. Ugh! Double ugh! Triple quadruple ugh! He runs to the sink and spits. It tastes like crunchy tuna fish. Guess again. Marianne starts laughing. Joey rips the blindfold off. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to be sick. He drinks straight from the faucet. What was that? Marianne holds up the bag of cat food. Joey stares at her. You fed me cat food? Marianne is on the floor. She's laughing so hard. I don't make a sound. I don't want Joey to think I had anything to do with this. But Joey looks right at me. How could you let me eat cat food? I try to explain that he pointed to it. That's how you play the game. That Marianne fed it to him, not me. But the flour I ate must have turned into glue because my mouth is stuck shut. I thought you were my friend. Friends don't let friends eat cat food. Joey spits in the sink again. He stares at me. I wish you didn't live next door to me. Maybe your wish will come true, says Marianne. But Joey doesn't stick around to find out how. The back door slams behind him. Somehow I knew this was going to be trouble. Part of me feels like I should run after Joey. And part of me feels like I want to stay here with Marianne. All of me feels like the cream filling inside an Oreo must feel when the cookie is pulled apart. Two sides want me, and I don't know who to stick to. This is the end of part four.